Yeah. All right. Good job, little brother. High five. No. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Multiverse Fancast. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you get your podcast. You can also find us on our YouTube channel. If you're watching us right now, make sure you guys leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul, with me via the Zoom studio. Even though he's not currently on screen, he's attempting to point to a subscribe button that I'm not going to edit in for him, is Ronnie. Ronnie, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing bad now that you won't edit that in, but... Other than that, I'm good. <laughs> so obviously, Ronnie has never watched any of our YouTube content because it's always like a still shot of me doing the intro. And then it cuts to, in in pure Spielberg fashion, cuts <laughs> to the two. And so obviously, Ronnie's a little... I Maybe I'll cut it in just for you this time. Yes. No, he won't. <laughs> Too much editing. I might. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where I'm at. We'll see where I'm at when this episode rolls around. But we are back, and this week we are finally, finally, finally talking about the end of the DCEU and the whimper it went out on, and that is Aquaman, the Lost Kingdom. So, the Lost Kingdom? The Fallen Kingdom? The Forgotten Kingdom? What is it? This movie should have been forgotten. The Lost uh, Kingdom. All right, we, so Ronnie and I, just off the bat, we are differing opinions of this movie. As far as, and we'll get, we'll get into it, but it, there's going to be some lively debate. And by lively, I mean, we're going to just be like, hey, this is what I think. Yeah. So, you know, we're really excited. And obviously we want to hear from you guys. So if you guys are listening and you hear something that you guys like, leave a like. If you guys don't agree with us, leave a comment and we'll do our best to our answer back or argue back i don't know ronnie doesn't do the youtube so it's just me so if you don't agree with me <laughs> you're you're out of luck but anyway so we're gonna rewind the clock though a little bit because we did do an episode for aquaman we did it back in 2019 the movie the first one released in 2018 and it was a surprise surprise hit yeah aquaman was considered by most to be a joke to be mm -hmm. the jokiest of jokes that ever did joke so yeah. Before we actually, before we do Aquaman, our first interactions with him, we got a brief, brief, brief shot of him in Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice when they do the whole montage of the Justice League, which Lex Luthor gave them all emblems too, which was really nice of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was our first real look at him and kind of what the kind of vibe they were going with. Yeah, it wasn't until Justice League, and we'll go, we'll talk the first Justice League, the original Joss Whedon cut, really quick, and then we'll talk the Snyder cut, which is the quote unquote definitive. Yes. Thoughts on Aquaman, Ronnie, from Justice League? From Justice League, if we're talking, you know, the crap one, he still was good in Justice League, the crap one, but nothing compares to how he was in the first Aquaman movie as well as Snyder's Justice League movie. Yeah, they're um, very different. The the yeah. Aquaman, there are some some of the, the similarities, like, I know a lot of people were afraid he was going to be way too bro surfer dude. Yeah. In Justice League and even in the Snyder Cut, they don't not not as much as we were afraid it was going to be. Mm -hmm. In Aquaman, the movie, they lean more into it, but it, it works in his own movie. Yeah. But like, obviously, the, the big shot was uh, Cyborg catching him and, he, and the, the My Man line and yeah. his Aquaman whoop. I actually really do enjoy. I, see. So I'll be honest, I love Jason Momoa. I think he's just such mm -hmm. a bro dude. I would love to hang out with him. Like he is just yeah. one he did a video like a long time ago on Instagram where he just like chugs a, a Guinness and then throws an axe at the wall and he's just like talking to it was awesome. Just yeah. He seems like I definitely feel like he might smell though. Yeah, I see like a lot of his videos where he takes kind of is he from Hawaii? I don't know. Uh, but he takes kind of like that Islander vibe to like the ultimate. Yeah. So he is actually from Honolulu, Hawaii. That's wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like he definitely acts like an Islander would act, you know, just seeing from, like I said, like his, his videos that you see on social media and stuff like that. Like you picture how he, you know, if you think, oh, he would act like, you know, living off the land and just oh yeah, I get he, he, dude, he, he, like he on his own food. I could see it. Yeah, oh yeah. But so we get him in in Justice League, and 
you know, he plays his role. He does what he's supposed to do. The reluctant, he's more like the reluctant type hero in it. I actually, he's much better in the Snyder cut as, as all of the characters, including like the flash and all of them are it, because they create this forced tension in justice league with Aquaman, where suddenly he's like, this is a bad idea to bring back Superman. But like, in, I do, I not gonna lie. I do like the scene where he sits on the lasso of truth, even though that was a Joss Whedon scene and it was like supposed to be funny. I, I did think it was mildly entertaining. Mm-hmm. we have him in the Snyder cut where he is a little bit more serious and a little bit more like he doesn't want to be there. He's not there to help, but he does help anyway. Like you get more of the, the scene of him in the Arctic, you know, with that small fishing village and yeah. they call him the Aquaman. Like that's his, his actual title that the people gave to him. So yeah. let's fast forward. We get to 2018 and Aquaman, the movie rolls around. Now Aquaman was fine in justice league, including the Joss Whedon cut, which was, which is still at the time canon, DCEU. They have not officially said that the Snyder Cut is canon, and it never will because they're done. They are so done with yeah. it. But we have him in his first solo film, and we were apprehensive. I think apprehensive is a good term because Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. It was it's Aquaman who, even though yes, like growing up and watching like the Justice League shows and stuff like Super that, friends. like. You know, he's a main character because he is part of the Justice League. However, it's like you're like a B C lister on the Justice League. Mm-hmm. You know, like the was... he's the butt of the jokes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. like it was expecting that and also the way the DCEU was at that time also mm-hmm. kind of gave it a bad vibe and some doubt. You know, I've you know, kind of slightly going ahead, but I've never really been a big fan of Amber Heard to begin with. So, like, even that for me was kind of like, eh, you know, having her in a big role, like, I mean, it was filled, too, with a bunch of, you know, pretty much no names. You know, like, yes, you had, like, William Defoe. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman, yeah, but, like, I mean, Nicole Kidman, can you really count, was in the movie? For, like, 12 minutes. That's more than (laughs) it was. Yeah, I mean, but you had, like, a William Defoe, like, good actor, great actor, one, you know, kind of best all-time kind of stuff. And you had Dolph Lundgren, but, you know, mm-hmm. like, that that's really all you had in this movie. Yeah, it even real... Tamara Timur- Morrison, who plays Django Fett, or Bubba Fett and Django Fett, like, yeah. he, he's just come back in a little bit more prominence with the Boba Fett show, but, yeah, he's another one. So yeah. Aquaman rolls around, and they manage to make him cool again. Oh, they, yeah. they make him the reluctant. There was also a big push in the in the nineties and two thousands to make Aquaman cool and not so much the super friends version of Aquaman, you know, yeah. riding around on his seahorse and like Family Guy was still making fun of him. Like, you know, there's the scene where like the lady's getting attacked on the beach and he's like, Hey, mm-hmm. from the water, don't don't yeah. don't maybe come over there or <laughs> come over here. Yeah. But so they, they managed to make the the orange suit look great. They managed to he does ride a seed horse in it. Like they had Aquaman was so good and so impactful that when they went to do Namor and the underwater city, they didn't want to do Atlantis. They didn't want to make it look like it, the Atlantis from this because they didn't want A, to be compared to the DC, mm-hmm. and B, they didn't want people to get confused. Yeah. But, you know, that just the opening scene alone is just badass. The submarine oh, heist yeah. is one of the best superhero sequences of all time. Yes. But, and we were big fans. I don't remember what we gave a Star City ratings for it, but. It, it was probably relative, like probably a three to five or maybe even a four. Yeah. But on a budget of 160 to 200 million, it grossed over one billion dollars. Yeah. Uh, so I believe it. I want to say it was the most success or one of the most successful DC EU projects. I can't. Let's see. I'm trying to find box office really quick, but it, it's definitely one of the more successful ones, which is awesome. And unfortunately, we. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so sorry to cut you off. It no, did. Hey, it was the highest grossing installment in the DCEU and the highest grossing film based on any DC character, as well as like in Warner Bros. Yeah. So, all right, ready? Man of Steel on a budget of two hundred and twenty-five million made over six hundred. Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice on a two hundred and fifty. So not that much more than Man of Steel, which is crazy. Yeah. Almost a billion dollars, eight hundred and seventy-four. Suicide Squad made 749 on 175 million. 
Wonder Woman made 823 on 149 million, which well deserved. Wonder Woman, we will always mm-hmm. sing praises for the Wonder Woman movie. Justice League made 661 on a 300 million dollar budget. Oof. Woof. Then Aquaman rolls around and it makes a billion dollars. Shazam, not as good. 300 plus on a hundred million dollar. Birds of Prey, or the fabulous anticipation of one Harley Quinn, which we, I think we did enjoy for the uh, 200 million on an 84 million dollar budget. Wonder Woman 80. Oh. <laughs> Wonder Woman 84 and Suicide Squad were not only victims of just. Wonder Woman was just not a good movie. Suicide Squad was a good movie. Just they both came out during the pandemic. So they they had terrible yeah. box offices comparatively. But nobody talks about that because obviously they understand, you know. Mm-hmm. Black Adam, even though like all the, the crap that happened with it afterwards, 393 million on 195. Like it still made its money back and more. Uh Shazam, Fury of the Gods, 134 on a 125 million dollar budget. Woof. Mm-hmm. All right. The Flash. 270. 270- 271 million on a 200 million dollar budget that's not that good no Um, blue beetle good for blue beetle 130 million on a 104 million dollar budget we liked blue beetle if memory yes and then aquaman and the lost kingdom which we're going to talk about right now 434 million dollars on a 205 million dollar budget not bad the franchise as a whole was worth 2.657 billion dollars so like people give a lot of grief to the DCEU and like more for content. Yes. But it made money. It was a billion. It was an over $2 billion franchise. Yeah. I mean, you know, going back to, you know, for Warner Bros, this is it's the first one was the third highest grossing film worldwide they've ever had, mm-hmm. you know, behind Barbie and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Hallows part two. Those are the only two movies in Warner Bros. disposal that has made more money than the first Aquaman movie. That's crazy. Especially for someone that's so, you know, at the time of the movie, he became more like a B. I still don't even say he's like an A-list until after the first Aquaman movie did he become like an A-list superhero oh absolutely he very very iron man ish in that regard yeah. where iron man was not a well-known character at the time you had to be a comic book nerd to know who iron man was but he rolls around and then suddenly he is in every you can't make a marvel property or a cartoon yeah. show or anything without putting iron man in it yeah but let's get to actually my favorite iron man reference of all time the in the lego batman movie what's the password yeah. iron man sucks still yeah. one of the funniest. i don't know how they got away with it but it's still <laughs> one of the funniest things ever yeah all right so we are now jumping in. Oh, oh God. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And this is the last official movie of the DCEU. Rest in peace. We will miss you, kind of, sort of. So, <laughs> Ronnie and I have differing opinions of this movie, and I'm very excited to see where we're at. Just initial thoughts on the Lost Kingdom, then. Um. Uh, so, I feel like we're going to be kind of similar. I feel like our scores might end up being the same, but for different reasons, possibly. That's fair. But, I mean, if I was to say overall, like, this movie is predictable. The There was a lot more Amber Heard than I was expecting. All right, so really quick, really quick, really quick. Yeah. Spoiler alert for Aquaman. Okay. I know the reason we're doing it is because it just came out on HBO Max, and that's why we're yes. like, let's do the episode now, so we both can kind of watch it at our leisure. But yeah. full spoilers for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So let, let's start there with the Amber Heard stuff. Obviously, in the midst of right before filming, I want to say, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial was going on, which captivated the entire world. You know, mm-hmm. even, even people like us who were not that invested were still like watching the train wreck. Yeah. So movie rolls around and Amber Heard's found pretty much guilty, not only in the port- court of public opinion, but also in the actual legal court. So Warner Brothers, because they have to save face after after screwing over Johnny Depp with the Grindelwald stuff, Mm -hmm. they have to save face. So the rumors were were spread that she was going to be cut from the movie completely. You can't it's hard to do that contractually. And that's that, you know, Johnny Depp, obviously, he did have some sort of contract with Warner Brothers for the Grindelwald stuff, but. They, they have all sorts of clauses in these contracts, usually like a morals and ethics type clause, et cetera, et cetera. So that way they can actually get rid of actors a little bit easier. Uh, I don't know what the legal case was for this, but she is in the movie. She is in the movie, and we all thought they were going to kill her off at some point, early on especially. But yes. they don't, and she's she's in it. She's in the yeah. whole thing. 
Yeah, which is weird because they did cut scenes. They did say they yeah. cut scenes during reshoots. So speaking, he's already in it for like half the movie. Know, right. So what speaking of re- cut? <laughs> well, here's what they cut. Speaking of reshoots, let's let's jump right into it. Mm-hmm. This movie was being made at the tail end of the DCEU. Things were already happening that was going to just it was going to affect this movie, right? And the solo films can kind of work on their own, but then you have some issues, right? Originally, Michael Keaton's Batman was supposed to cameo in this, supposedly, because they were going to make him into the main Batman of the DCE universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they decided they were going to have Ben Affleck cameo. Instead, they cut out all the Batman references. There was I don't think there was ever going to be any other main Justice Leaguers, but yeah, they cut out a lot of stuff and mostly because they wanted to make a cohesive story without having they wanted to wrap up the dceu on their terms for the most part but at the at the same time it still ends on a huge i don't say cliffhanger but like a huge moment for the dceu yeah. and then the mid credit scene just makes the whole thing end on a whimper so <laughs> that's where we're at but yeah apparently keaton cameo had had been cut and then they wanted but then james gunn had jumped in and Saffron was still involved and blah, blah, blah. It, it was a mess. Oh, yeah. Such a mess. And it's a shame. Again, just like the Snyder Cut, I would really like to. I really hope at some point James Gunn finally is like, here's the air cut of Suicide Squad and here's what we originally were to do for Aquaman. Enjoy. And just. Yeah. Even if because now now Gunn is talking about all this stuff that's happening right now. And I think Stephen Amell did a, an interview recently and he's like, I'm really happy to hear all this DC stuff, but show stop telling us what's going to happen and start showing us what's going to happen like start making moves so at the time of recording they just started filming superman which used was superman legacy and now is superman that's just what it's called which i'm fine with so and now he james gunn is saying that originally that movie was visualized as a matt reeves batman style movie where it was its own independent thing far and then obviously they got control of dc entertainment and decided that they're going to start their universe there so it, it's a lot. It's a lot happening right now, but it was it was in the works for a while. We'll never know how long exactly, but you know, the flash was the nail of the coffin, not this movie, which is oh yeah. So let's go through the cast really quick because they're all in for the most part, it is the same cast. There aren't a whole lot of new in this, but here we are anyway. So Jason Momo returns Arthur Curry slash Aquaman, who is playing the huge balancing act of King, Dad, Husband, and honestly, it was Probably the most relatable part of the entire movie. Like, I never thought I'd relate to a superhero as hard as I did watching Jason Momoa's Aquaman try and fall asleep or try and stay awake, having the baby pee at him. And then, yeah. not gonna lie, I, I when well, I'm watching it with producer Melanie, and when Mira makes the piece go the opposite way, she's like, I wonder if she did that to Johnny Depp too. I was like, no, no. <laughs> oh, it, it sucks. We'll talk about Mira in a second, but. Oh, God, she's just a terrible person. Yeah. Anyway, I wish I didn't know how to terrible person. It's so much more fun when you don't know how terrible the celebrities are in real life. Yeah. But So I really did enjoy him kind of finding that balancing act and also being bored as hell being king. And he's like, it's all committees. It's like, I can't make any changes. I can't, I'm, it's more of a, it's more of a, like a presentation title. It's really like, I'm not making laws. I'm not changing things. I can't make decisions without the entire com- I thought it was exceptionally relatable and and well yeah. well presented. What were your thoughts on Aquaman on this one? You know, to me, Aquaman is always good. Like, Jason Momoa, to this day, is one of, like, the best castings that have ever happened. He just looks the part. Like, when you think of Aquaman, even though I know, like, a lot of times he's kind of got, like, the blonde hair. But I mean, other than that, like his look, his physique, like because it's not the goofy one that we know of from back, like when we were king or kings kids (laughs) and like, you know, like teenagers growing up with like those, you know, those shows like him being goofy, the punchline like this is like, no, like he's like more serious and straight laced and like, you know, the king basically instead of just like a little minion. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, again, like Aquaman, I think he was great in this, as always, just like in the first one. Um, he's one of the few highlights of this movie. All right. So Patrick Wilson then returns as Orm. And 
the movie for us, my, myself and producer Melanie both agreed that the movie started off very slow. It wasn't mm-hmm. until Aquaman and Orm got together that the movie, not only did it change pace completely, but it also changed um, tone, I think yes. is the way to describe it. And I love the two of them together. I thought it was the the best thing that they could have done to put the two of them together. At first, and I, I had to think about this because I was going to complain about it. I was like, Orm's kind of a bitch in this movie. Like, he was Ocean Master. He was like king of the sea. Yeah. He, and then I realized, I was like, his brother was the first person to ever really challenge him. He hasn't yeah. been challenged in his entire life physically. Like, he just, he was, I'm supposed to be king. So I'm king. Mm-hmm. So it made more sense. Like, as we're, as I was thinking about it, I was like, no wonder he, like, a couple of licks he took. But I thought the movie got so, I would have much rather watched an entire movie of the two of them together than what we got and i'll explain why because i did like what we got but it could have been better what were your thoughts on orm in this movie i kind of agree with you it was almost like watching like a buddy cop film Mm -hmm. um you know again after the first act or so you know once they got him from uh what the heck was it called or or callum or calcum or something like that you know like right right after that you know until kind of like the end battle scenes and stuff like that. Like that middle part is what was good about the movie. And a lot of it had to do with seeing Orm, you know, and Arthur Curry kind of working, Aquaman working together. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they have some great moments with each other. They have some great dialogue. They're funny together. They work well off of each other. They were a highlight in the first movie. I did enjoy their relationship, but this movie solidified. And also they felt more like actual brothers in this movie because they bickered and they were like little brother. He's like, don't call me that. And like all that stuff. And then eventually Orm, normally I don't like the the bad guy turning good, but the the Aquaman continuity has always been very interesting with the bad guys. Like I think the most recent iteration of Aqualad is Black Manta's son. So that was like a whole thing. So like they've never been shy about making complex relationships and you wouldn't think that with aquaman let's see amber heard as mira and they injure her halfway through and we don't see much of her otherwise yeah no. we don't see her until again kind of it's almost like we had mira and then she went away when orm got there and then she doesn't come back again until you know the last third or so of the movie mm-hmm um, it's a shame because I liked Mira in the first movie. I thought her powers were really cool. I thought the way they presented them. And then in the Snyder Cut, when she like does the blood bending on on Steppenwolf, it's it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, it is a you know we've we've seen it before. You know Jonathan Majors, Amber Heard, like even Johnny Depp when he got fired from Grindelwald. What happens outside is really impactful now on your career because everybody hears about it. The the trial of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp was always on everybody was paying attention to it like it it was a it was a mess and yeah. she, she did not come out looking good and it is what it is she's in the movie then she's not in the movie then she comes back that's about it yeah. she has no if they had killed her off in the beginning the movie would be the exact same a hundred percent they're no different she made zero impact on the entire mm-hmm. thing next up we got oh i'm gonna mess up his name i always do yaya abdul mantin mateen the second as David Kane slash Black Manta returning from the first movie. Somehow they made his power suit look cooler. Yeah. I, I liked it. I did not like how I understood what they did. Like he's trying to get revenge on Aquaman, but he's getting this, this trident from the ruler of the lost kingdom. And it's more controlling him and controlling yeah. his actions. I would have been, I would have been completely okay if he had just found all this ancient tech and was just waging war on Aquaman. Because the, the scene where he attacks Atlantis is really cool. Yeah. But I I wasn't they they gave him just like a catalyst to just still be evil. Like he he didn't need it. We knew why he wanted to kill Aquaman. It made sense why he wanted to kill Aquaman. Yeah. They just had to raise the stakes. I think it would have been the movie would have been much better if it had just been about destroying Atlantis, not the not necessarily. I'm under evil control. You're you're already a bad guy, dude. You're like you're yeah. a hundred. <laughs> right? You don't. You didn't need. What was it? What was a evil dude called? What What's his name? I oh, forget. Um, oh God! Yeah, ne- Neris? No. Wow. Yeah, well, I know this where it is. Oh, Neris. Near. No, that's that's Dolph Lundgren. We're we're wow, gonna... we're, we're very good at this, guys. Yeah. Um, but whatever his name is, you know, like like. Cordax? Maybe. 
Kordak. Yes, Kordak. Right? All right, we got it. Don't worry. There we go. Okay, we're, we're professionals, everyone. I am um, not editing any of that out. That was wonderful. <laughs> but you don't, you didn't need to have like the Black Trident taking over, you know, Black Manta. Yeah. Like you said, like, like he was fine how he was. He already wanted to kill, you know, Aquaman. I think the thing with having, you know, the Black Trident and the powers of Kordax taking over Black Manta was so, you know, Kordax could be set free, you know, and then he can rule over like he wanted to when he was first around. They could have um, just done something along the lines where he finds this Black Trident, like still use the Black Trident, but just yeah. make it a weapon and... If he manages to get it to the throne of the Lost Kingdom, he like gains control over the seas. Like you could have written that a little bit better. In yeah, sense I understood it. It just again, you're you're adding evil to an already evil character. It's one thing if it's corrupting a good character. Like yes. we did see it like affect Orm, which was an interesting scene, and yeah. Randall Park's character, who we're going to talk about next. <laughs> but like, in all honesty, they it it was just all right, whatever. Yeah. But otherwise, I like I like the actor, and he's he's yoked in this movie still. Like, oh, yeah. good for him, man. But moving down the list, we have Randall Park as Dr. Stephen Shin. They introduced him in the first one as like a crackpot scientist. It's funny because I didn't realize that in this movie, they still didn't realize that Atlantis didn't exist. They just they thought Aquaman was just a regular a regular metahuman. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was interesting, and I I love Randall Park. I'm a huge fan of Randall Park. Yeah. We just got to some of his episodes on Drunk History. We're we're watching for the first time, and he is he's funny. I really enjoy him, and he was fine in this. I really enjoyed him in this movie too. I like that yeah. he was conflicted, and he was like, "I signed up to find Atlantis, not destroy the world." And the scene where he like tries to please help me, please get yeah. me out of here is <laughs> is great. And I like I think Aquaman's like just knock him out. Just I can't. Yeah. But, he was good, and I like that he was conflicted. It added a little bit of layer to this movie, which could have just been generic action movie, superhero punch punch. I liked him in this movie. What were your thoughts? No, I agree. I mean, you know, Randall Park in DCEU, Randall Park in MCU does not fail. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I did like his character. He's kind of like, he's almost like the relatable one where you're like, you know, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing my job. Because how many times is that? happen in real life situations where you're like i'm doing my job and then your boss like takes things a little too far or something like that and you're like uh maybe we shouldn't be doing that but you're too scared to stop because of how low like on the totem pole you are or whatever it may be so you're kind of like hesitant to actually talk up to the boss and stand up for yourself yeah that happens a lot in the real world what um, <laughs> you know so like it, it's good to have those those relatable characters that you can relate to real life because again most of the characters in here you can't really relate to because i don't know about you i don't talk to fish there's know? that one time i mean maybe i do but they don't talk back to me like i can't converse with usually them. you're eating them yes you know usually it's like sushi and i'm like oh you taste so good you know Actually, like I don't do that, by the way. <laughs> like, that's the extent of talking to fish I do. You know, like, so it's nice to always have that relatable character, you know, in the movies. Yeah. So I'm going to go through the rest of this list really quick, because the rest of these characters are, they're in it, but they're not really in it. Dolph Lundgren yeah. returns as Nearest, or Nearest. Tamara Morrison as Thomas Curry, who's more of just like words of wisdom for the most part. Yeah. Mar Martin Short as the voice of Kingfish. What? Yeah, <laughs> that was I didn't recognize his voice at all. They they did a good job with that. Yeah. Uh, Cole Kidman is Atlanta and she spends way more time in Atlantis. It doesn't seem like her and and Arthur or Thomas Curry are like a thing, but they yeah. she's taken up the role that Volko had because he gets killed off screen. Willem Dafoe's character from the first mm -hmm. movie. Okay. So that's the main cast. There are a couple of others, but those are the ones that we're going to see for the majority of this movie. Now, this movie is also unique in the fact that it does not have a single DCEU cameo at all. I'm so shocked Gal Gadot was not in it because she did 14 cameos. Like, she was in Shazam! Fury of the Gods and she was in The Flash, both bad green screen effects. Oh. But, yeah. So I'm kind of surprised she wasn't in here and we never got our chance to see uh, Shazam interact with any of the DCEU characters. He he would have been fun working with Aquaman. I would have enjoyed that those interactions. Yeah. But 
you know, the movie, like we said, it does follow beat for beat. It It's predictable, but at the same time, it's still a good time. It's well written. It's well acted. And it does end on this big moment where Aquaman reveals Atlantis to the world. Because like we said, they know Aquaman. They know of him like he's he's a member of the Justice League, et cetera, et cetera. But they didn't know Atlantis was real. But we're never going to get the resolution to that, unfortunately. Yeah. So the movie was good, though. I enjoyed it. Like, if you want to do Star City rating? We could, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give it a three. It is above average. I will not say it's as good as the first one. The first one, the first one had no business being as good as it was. Yeah. This one, I I went in with super low expectations after Flash. Like, super, super low. Like, the DCEU just crawled and whimpered and died in the corner. And I'm not just talking about it as a franchise. I'm talking about it as quality, right? Like, there, I could rewatch Man of Steel a ton of times. I can rewatch Batman vs. Superman. I've rewatched the Snyder Cut. Which in itself is just a, a it's a chore. I'll be honest. It was it was yeah. it was not as much fun the second time, but I still I still watch the last fourth of that movie. It's still really good. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, so good. Even even the Joss Whedon Justice League, I can watch parts of. And then you get to here where we are with with the Flash and and this movie. Like this movie, I'm glad. I am so glad the DC Universe did not end on Flash. But this movie, I'm going to give a solid three two. All right. I'm going to be slightly lower than you. I'm going to be a 2.5. Uh, it's been a while since we've disagreed on a Star City rating. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, even when we do, it's never anything drastic. Never, it's never off. I'm trying to yeah. think of any movies that we've been dramatically off with. I don't. Th- I feel like the most we've done is like a point off. Hmm. But usually we're around within a half a point. But yeah, I, I give this a 2.5. It's just middle of the road. It's super predictable. I did not like the opening scene. It looked like I was watching like someone playing PlayStation. I can uh, I can get behind that. You know, like like I kind of like understood it. Like once they showed him playing with the action figures, I actually like, really I actually kind of enjoyed that. That was that was a that lot. part I did. Like the I, action I, figures, I liked. But well, was, I was afraid that they were going to have that be the entire thing. But then they kept cutting back, and I was like, okay, all right, this is the yeah. kind of movie where it set the tone. All right, yes, all right, I'm there. I'm I'm behind yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, like the, that part kind of just threw me off. The predictability, you knew what was going to happen at every single moment. You're like, up, oh, Orm's going to take up. Oh, now Orm's going to, you know, help. You know, like yeah. even with what's his face when Dolph Lundgren, Dolph Lundgren's like falling off the bridge or whatever. I did like the scene where he's like, "Give me a gun." He's like, "Here's a hammer." Yeah, yeah. Like that was funny. Like, like, but then, like, you know, you see him like continue up the bridge. You're like. He's gonna end up helping him, yeah. you know. Like, like it was just so does. much of it is just, just. It was almost as if like I wrote it because mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how much I knew was gonna happen. Yeah, and it, to me, like that shows lack of any like will to actually do the movie. So, like, mm-hmm. I wonder, like, how much, how much did they know that this was going to be going to be it? Yes, like, did they really put their effort into this movie? I, I I didn't even get to ask. What did you did this movie make you want a pet octopus? Because Topo was the best thing in this movie. He was. He was. He, he was, was in the hot. first movie. Did you know he was yeah. in the first movie? He he does the drums in the their big battle scene. And oh, that was really? like a, yeah. That was like a cameo for him. And but in this movie, and he's character from the comics and from like the shows and stuff. Yeah. And, they, and they also do his seahorse, which is phenomenal but yeah i like topo but we want to hear your thoughts so make sure if you guys are watching us on youtube drop a comment below let us know what your star city rating for aquaman and what your thoughts are on the end of the dceu and the start of the dcu but if you guys want more of our content you can also go to our facebook page no fan feedback friday today because of logistics pure logistics because (laughs) now we release our episodes on friday so we have to record before friday it's it's just a lot it's a lot that's happening But if you guys want more of our content, you go to our Facebook page. We're also on all the social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Our TikTok exploded with two videos that we recently did that got about 8,000 views a piece. Same with our YouTube. Some of our shorts are really blowing up. So we want to thank you guys for all your love and support. But make sure if you guys are on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, likes, comments, subscriptions, it makes a big difference. So make sure you guys hit that down below. But I think that is going to wrap us. Stop pointing. I'm not I'm not editing. <laughs> stupid that's gonna wrap us up for today as always i'm paul i'm ronnie and we'll be back in a flash see ya